introduce Greg Krakowski, who's one of my favorite men from Poland, and he immigrated here over 35 years ago or something like that, probably. Yeah, came to work for uh, uh, American Express and changed them, turned them around from not a very profitable company, but a very profitable company in the IT field. He's been in Jacksonville probably 12 years or 15 years or something like that. Four, five. Four or five. <laughs> feels like 15 yeah, it years. Feels like, <laughs> it feels like it. It feels like it. feels much longer, actually. Greg Kukowski. Kukowski. And uh, he's got his business card to give you, And uh, but he knows the internet. He's written four books. I can't name them all four, but he can tell you what they are. But he teaches at UNF. He's a consultant at businesses. and. Uh, has helped transform different companies to be more effective in the marketplace. So he's a, a neat guy and he's been involved in Wise Council, so he knows a little bit about what this is all about. And so uh, let's give him a big round of applause. Thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thanks for the invitation. It's my pleasure to be here. Thank you. What I want to do is, uh, is to share with you latest and greatest what I see the opportunities to, to make money with the software without having to be a programmer you know, in business, in different types of businesses where I see the market going. And uh, one of the tremendous advantages, especially to small businesses, is that you can have infrastructure of a Fortune 500 company for about 200 bucks per month, if you know what you're doing and if you're starting fresh. Because if you have some legacy systems, it's always something. But if you, let's say, you start completely from scratch today, completely new business, you can have unbelievable infrastructure day one. The challenge is that, and very inexpensive, something that would be millions of dollars even 15 years ago. So I will talk about what's the impact of it and how to make money on it, just because something is available doesn't necessarily mean it's easy to implement. And so this is what I will come to talk about. So if I understand what you said, the it's about if you started out fresh as a business or whatever, this is what you would recommend or something, or yes, a clean all, start? Yes, a lot of things in small businesses, you can augment it with what you're doing. Already. Okay, all right, okay. And we'll, we'll talk about it. All right, good. And uh, we'll, we'll talk about how to prioritize it. So I, I, my background is I, I enjoy analyzing data, but I also, and I have IT background, but my IT background is more from how to make decisions with data rather than code. So I mean, I don't, don't, don't look at me as a digit head that is doing coding. I'm more on the how to use it to support decision making in business. Not in science. Those are very different things. So the idea is that what we're really trying to, what I'm helping businesses to do and what all businesses have a tremendous opportunity right now is to do much better real-time tracking. Real-time, I mean, to even a second. But we'll talk about it. And that tracking meaning that getting your breadcrumbs from anything that our employees or yourself or, or your customers are touching, the, the keyboards and smartphones, this is all traceable if you know how to trace it. So once you have all the breadcrumbs, then you can start analyzing them. If you can analyze them, then you can automate them. You cannot analyze Think and automate things unless you analyze it. And automating something without making money doesn't make sense. It's an academic exercise, you know. And so ultimately, we want to optimize, not just. Uh, so the example will be watering the golf course, you know. Yes, you can automate it, but you can go out of business by putting too much water on it. How do you optimize the amount of water on the golf course depending on the temperatures and humidity and sun and things like that? And, and actually type of the soil rather than just pour water every two hours, you know, there's a difference. So uh, I, I, I worked with very large companies over the years, helping them with, with the uh, things, about, especially tracking, yeah, but we are making tremendous progress very recently. A lot of my work was, was, was the historical databases. So we uh, were larger installations with this was for Mobile Oil Worldwide before they became ExxonMobil. And the uh, idea was how we can equip managers to know what happened week ago, months ago, quarter ago, year ago. Who cares? Like water under the bridge. 
and that's needed, don't get me wrong, it's like looking in the rear view mirror in your car. Yes, it's, it's, it's needed. But where the revolution right now is in the real-time visibility of what every employee is doing, or every customer is doing. And so that's the revolution where I see in real-time analytics and tremendous opportunity to make money. So I will skip that one. I, so I enjoy the economy. I also like writing, and and I, my, I got my MBA because in IT management because I worked for a bank, and every time I asked them for subsets of data, they told me fill out the application, wait six months, and I said I cannot work like this. <laughs> so I learned how to do it myself. <laughs> and I wrote six books, not four, but the part of the, my writing is I'm killing three birds with one stone. I started to teach completely by accident at UNF. Three years ago, <coughs> UNF was my first customer with digital marketing, and that led to, you know, do you want to speak in the class, do you want to teach the class? And then I got into it and I found out that the young people may be digital and native, but they have no idea about the complexity of the business world as far as technology. And there was no curriculum, so I had I have to, again, I wrote my own books, but they also are good for, um, for top executives. So the one that, one of the most recent one is a review of all the technologies and all the impacts on all the industries and business processes from the digital revolution. That became a course at UNF. We are working with Ponte Vedra High School to do it a dual enrollment trying to, because this should be taught in high schools, not at the universities, inspire kids what's possible. One of the examples is in construction, you know, you can have a, as a 19 year old, a drone flying business for construction to do a project oversight, you know, with the drone. Who is going to teach that? Who is going to certify it? Who is going to know that you, so there is a lot of new jobs that I call uh, blue collar, and not blue collar jobs, not white collar jobs, but digital collar jobs. They don't require college degree. They require knowledge of some of the digital tools, but they also require physical stamina, getting on the, on the ladder, on the attic. A perfect example it would be uh, all the sensors on the roads, signs on the roads, and the sensors in the you know, uh, home and commercial uh, safety, uh, all of those things. and solar panels, you know, who is going to install it? Who is going to install it? Who, that's one thing. Who is going to service it? Who is going to, if something goes wrong with selling that contract to JEA back, you know, who is going to fine tune? Uh, so the, the not traditional roofers, but you don't need a PhD in, in mechanical engineering to get on the roof and calibrate the sensors. Uh, this, this book was another one, was very interesting. The, there was too much hype about digital marketing in the past. You know, the, the Silicon Valley with all the budgets, you know, they were hyping that it's a next coming of whatever and everything will be digital. No, it's not ever going to be digital. Digital, everything will be digital. There are some things that will be digital. But when you think about anything we do in Jacksonville around the construction or logistics will never be digital. It will be supported. Roofers will ne never be digital. We're not going, not going to drink digital coffee anytime soon. <laughs> and so the restaurants, homes, gardens, you know, electricity, this is never, but you can support it much better with digital. Uh, so the trick is not necessarily to go digital or go tradi states traditional, the trick is to combine both of them. That's, that's where the trick is. This one is my, what's going on here? To, to plan B. It was doing so well. <laughs> it's digital. Digital. <laughs> no, Microsoft is not responding. See, this is the. <laughs> Need a Mac. This is amazing. That's, uh, why would that do that? I don't know, but we'll recover quickly. <laughs> and the idea is I will be talking about it the, so we, we don't waste time. The, the, my books are around how to, how to make advantage, how to take advantage of all those things rather than how to code them. 
And uh, you see this here. That one, that was an ultimate one. At the end of the day, we'll have so much data that the only way to make money is to analyze it. You know, that's the word, uh, and make sure that what you what you're doing is the what needs to happen. This one is how to digitize, optimize, and automate and analyze your business. Actually, that's a methodology of how to decide because we don't have. A, None of us, even if with unlimited budget, you don't have unlimited time. You will have to prioritize what you want to change. This one was my first bestseller on digital marketing for B2B. And this is my latest entrance into uh, how to run your business using the smartphone. And I concentrate on construction because construction is unbelievably ripe with possibilities. It's so dysfunctional today as far as interaction between subcontractors and general contractors and between subcontractor suppliers it's, it's a very rich target for automation with smartphones because if you give the right software to your field people and to your suppliers you can have a real-time visibility where everything is and that's worth a lot of money okay? and that's uh, and that also ties to the supply chain Today, believe it or not, in construction, they're wasting a lot of money waiting for trucks delivering something, and they don't know whether the truck will arrive in an hour or in three hours. And guess what? That's a lot of money waiting when your crew is there. So the companies are already making a visibility that I will show you over the internet what's not only where my truck is, but what's on my truck. Just because the truck is coming doesn't mean the truck has the right parts on it. So you have to know two of those things. Uh, there is also a lot of handshakes between subcontractors. One is they are in sequential order doing things, and they don't know about each other. And the, sub and the general contractor doesn't know. It's amazing. So I wrote the book. I actually did the uh, city of Jackson. We hired me to do a training, and that was the offshoot from that. <coughs> and the digital tsunami, what I'm talking about, is uh, that's quite a picture. Huh? That's amazing. It's an it's a unbelievable progress in the digital technologies. I think I, sh I shared it with you, but you know we have a, we have a more uh, power, computing power right now on our smartphones that we had when we went to moon and back and forth today. And the cost of computing went down 10,000 times in 20 years. Nothing in the history of humans went down that fast. <laughs> So if you, you know, this is an example that if you use this ratio of 10,000 drop in prices, the Corvette that was 15, 20 years ago, $30,000 and 15 miles per gallon, you should be able to get it for uh, $3 and, <laughs> and 150,000 miles, 15 miles per gallon. That's, that's, that tells you how, and we are still 20 years of that trend. It's not over. So that's uh, so. Think about it. So the Corvette will be now three cents, and <laughs> then I will get one. <laughs> we have more toothbrushes, and, and we have more phone, uh, smartphones around the world than toothbrushes and toilets. <laughs> There's no person in this world that is hungry and doesn't have a smartphone. You know, they may be actually hungry, but they will have smartphones. <laughs> Even homeless people, right? You're homeless people. Which Great. is also a tremendous implication because the disadvantaged population, they may not have the laptops at home, but they will have smartphones. Okay. Did you order something you want to order? Not just chicken, uh, turkey sandwich. Turkey sandwich, okay. Turkey sandwich or turkey and cheese panini? <laughs> Whichever comes first. On okay. the Whichever <laughs> one's digital. <laughs> there are actually more cell phones today than there are people alive on the planet. Yeah. Yeah, that's right, because there's, there we have multiple and different. Yeah. That's right. Mm -hmm. And and this is this be, became this is not a bottleneck, but it's also a tremendous a tremendous opportunity for if anybody is managing field workers or any relationships that are people are moving around or parts are moving around, because we can account for all of it. Because you can load the unbelievable software on it that will do all those tricks. 
I'm working with the construction company. We're finishing the project. We're putting all the field people on this. And any time they do something, they just click off from the checklist. And this is all I need. I roll it up, and I know everything. And it's automatic billing, automatic invoicing, automatic notifications, automatic project that update of this of, of, the, of the software. All right, now they're flying blind. They don't even know what they don't know. Okay? But you know that that's true. So this, this, this computing power would cut, cost you $4 million 20 years ago. So we are, that's the implication. So we have a choice either ride this wave or get swept by it. Are we going to get swept by it? I don't think so. Unless you are a completely pure digital play, like music or e-commerce, you're probably not going to be swept away. Like I said, the roofers are not going to go out of business. They're not going to get Uberized, you know. Or restaurants are not going to get. But however, how they manage it, and how they manage their cost, and how they manage their marketing, will be a differentiator. You know, it will help them a lot. Especially, I sometimes think that in some businesses, especially in in construction, it's not necessarily marketing. Marketing is done on the golf course and through winding and dining and knowing that somebody in the city council. That's marketing. You don't need digits for it but where you can make tremendous amount of money by saving money in your operations. You know. So for some businesses, it's a marketing. For some businesses, it's operation. For some of them, it's a combination. You know. And it really depends on the types of businesses. So what's, the, what's going on? Uh, now I will translate it to, just to, to, to something that is tangible. We have unbelievable progress in software technologies, both in hardware and software, but really translates to software. We can do more with software. And when you think about software, it's nothing, that, nothing but a tool that allows you to do things faster. The software by itself doesn't do anything. You know, we've always done those things, but we were doing them by hand. And then the second one is very interesting. As I said, that company that I'm working with right now, they are paying 200 bucks per month to support the whole construction business with the software, off the shelf software that you had to tweak a little bit. That uh, Haskell Pro spent, you know, millions of dollars on it 15 years ago and still it's not even there as far as being able to connect with each other. Which is also very interesting because the smaller companies can now compete on cost with the big ones because they are shackled by the legacy systems, you know. It's a very interesting dynamic, a very interesting dynamic. So every click can be recorded. When you think about it, today the technologies on the marketing side, if you come to my website and you sign, sign up through your email with, on my website, and I will give you something in return, whatever it is, coupon, ebook, or whatever, and you come back on my website, I know every time you click, I, didn't, I know how much time you spent on each subset of my website today. Uh, so those are with customers on the side, and if they call to my call center, I will know who they called, what they talked about, I can do voice to text, means that I can search my, uh, which was impossible until now, the quality of the service, because I cannot watch my agents, because I know what was talk, said, and I know who talked to whom when, so I know tons of things. And that's on the customer side. On the employee side, uh, by law, you, you have right to every click they, they, they do. And when you think about it, most of the jobs that are not manual go through keyboards or go through smartphones. All of it's traceable. If it's tied to the project management, we can basically track it like there is. And I will give you an idea. So what, what we are doing, we are just, this translates to much less expensive tracking of processes. Not necessary, let's not even think about all this digital and not digital. This is the end of the road. This is where the benefit is. Right, right. Um, the, the tracking of the data, um, I see how that's done and how that's so much more economical than in the past. But when you say, well, I can see um, who talked to who, what they said, and all that kind of stuff, it reminds me of you know the communists uh, spying on everyone in the world. Who's got the time to, or, or how do you, at the end of the day or any time, 
analyze who said what to who and all that stuff. I mean, it's great stuff to have, but like I have a heck of a time keeping up with 100 emails a day. You know, I mean, uh, all, uh, to, to answer your question, it was a combination of our privacy policies. The, in the blockchain, in the going forward, you will have a right to control what you're disclosing to anybody you're dealing with. So when you're on my website, you will just give me the phone number and email. You know? But when you're at the doctors, you will give them the, your health records. So when you're applying for a job, you will be able to disclose just your resume. When the technology is getting to the point that with the, with the blockchain, you will be in control over who you are releasing, what information will be completely traceable and transparent. Today we are not there yet. I suspect we are about 10 years from, from there. Plus we have to change the laws. Meaning that if today if you put something on Facebook, you have no idea what they're doing. It. With, the, with the Gmail is the same. In the past, all of it will be traceable. There will be a breadcrumbs, you know, what did they do with it? And if you said, I don't want to disclose it, they will be liable if they do. Today, we cannot enforce it yet. Technology exists, politics doesn't, you know, because of their, they're too strong. You know my position, you know, on the, what's going on. You're talking about comments. I'm not afraid of comments, I'm afraid of corruption of the government officials by Silicon Valley. That, however, they are communists, so you may, you, have, you may have a point, but the idea is that we, we have to gain the ownership of our own data. I also think that the banks will probably get into a business of protecting our data. I mean, they are protecting our money today. I was able to authenticate myself. I have a business in Poland. And Poland had a very interesting situation because they were on Abacus 20 years ago or 15 years ago and they moved to the brand new uh, banking system. So I could do in Poland transactions that were certified by my bank vis-a-vis -vis other businesses in Poland. They were certifying my signature, bank was doing it. So the banks will, will get into a business probably or third parties now we're protecting our privacy and forcing all those contracts. So you have a control over. But as an employee, you don't have any control today. That, well, not, that has not changed. It's probably not going to change. I, I probably shouldn't have even mentioned communism in my question. My question was, you've gathered all this great information about both your employees and your, your clients. Who, how do you analyze it? Who has the time to... You have to automate it, and I teach it how to do it. You okay. have to automate it. There's a ways of automating it. Okay. You just have to know how to do it. One instance where it would be useful, the data would be useful, say you had a, a customer complaint about one of your employees, about a discussion that happened. You would actually have a recording. I mean, you would know exactly what was said in that discussion. And who said to whom what? You, 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 yeah, exactly. Or if there was any type of data breach or anything, you would be able to trace exactly what's going, you know what I mean? That's really, I, I think, what he's talking about. Yeah. What the question he's asking yeah. Yeah. is, it some, there's some practical uses on that, in that I, information. But typically yeah. it's when something bad has happened and you're trying to cover your sixes. Also compliance, um, you know, and, yeah. and the protection against losses. My position is that humans are not going to change. Humans will always come up with the great tools that you can, the knife is the best example. You can peel tomatoes, you can kill somebody with it, you know. Um, it will be legislation plus our way of governing ourselves. Technology will help for this process to be more transparent, but we'll never be able, we have to, as a citizens, watch the politicians in Silicon Valley. Okay, we have to educate ourselves. And the technology will do that. I will tell you there are already websites that are alternative to, to Facebook that are completely blockchain, meaning that completely encrypted, and completely out of reach of even people who control uh, domains of the internet domains. They are not even through the browsers, they are through the Windows applications behind the scene over the internet. So the there is, technology is very interesting. It's, in my judgment, call me naive, I think it's introducing enormous amount of transparency to both business process and politics. You know? And so I'm not afraid of, I think you have a valid concern and question, but I'm not necessarily concerned about this. We, if anything, we are tightening the, the ownership of the data that we can handle. We are still not there yet, don't get me wrong. There's still a lot of abuse. 
but what you do with this data, then it's really, this is where a lot of jobs will be actually. This is what UNF is doing. We beefed up analytics department in order to, to teach more students to do exactly that, because there are no skills right now how to do it. So did I answer your question? Yeah. Okay. So this is, if you think about this is very good for all of us, for any business, to know more in real time. Imagine in any of your business, if you know in real time what every employee is doing, what value of this has. And I will give you an example. This is nothing new. You know about FedEx tracking. Pizza delivery is tracking, you know, you know, that, you know when they put it in the oven, you know. Nothing new. The pizza has been around for as long as Italy was around, you know, and nothing new. But they, they track it. They tell you that they went out of the oven and when the driver is delivering. That's actually Domino's, but okay. Domino's, yeah. This was how we tracked the advertising. Now we are tracking advertising. If I click on this ad, the Chevy will pay two dollars to Google, and I can buy sixty thousand dollar track with for two dollars. In the past, was you know you advertise on it, you don't even know who bought it what. You know that's tracking when you think about it. This is also tracking from this to new. This is twelve inch integrated thing in new RAM 1500. You know it's amazing <laughs> what this can do. <laughs> and I would just buy RAM just for this. You know. Yeah. Forget about the track. You know, so. yeah. <laughs> not, However, track is also very impressive. So I don't know how we weren't all lost before we had GPS. We were. <laughs> we were. Oh, yeah. we were. I, I, there's a lot of uh, bad words that were spoken. Yeah, look at it. On the Just road. stop and ask for directions. <laughs> I know My head could have been in the way. Real men never ask for directions. Uh, this one, we, we, we're talking about Big Brother. Think about your tracker today. You're already on GPS and now you're on ELD. You, you, they know everything about you. That's a government stipulated thing that you, you have to, they know everything. Not only where you are, but where you work, what you, everything. What's electronic. E what's ELD? That's electronic uh, location something. The, that's uh, imposed by federal government in May of last year. Every tracker above, if you have company above, I think, five tracks or something like this. You have to report not only this, but you report this. And when the police pulls you over, you have to be, uh, this needs to be done through USB or Wi-Fi or through the stick. So the police will basically take it and say, either give me USB, Wi-Fi or stick, and they will put it in and check where you were. Because they want you, don't want you to drive over a certain number of hours. So now think about trackers being completely no privacy at all. And that trend is for all employees going forward. And there's no escape from it, actually. And so whether we like it or not, I don't think it's going to go away. You know, there may be some contracts between employees down the road, or unions may try to protect it so that it cannot be used for something else. But this is not going to go away. That was imposed by the federal government, okay, this type of tracking. This type of tracking, you know, the, we can track you right now through the body cameras. This baby has more tracking <laughs> than this one. It has more <laughs> software and more sensors than this one. Really? Yeah, you can, you can, you can farm now. You can do anything. With, you can almost fly to the moon with, with, that, with the previous one, faster than with this one. This is the old school. But that's much more aerodynamic. <laughs> that's the advantage to that. Oh, they, yes, I, 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 I will grant you that this is cooler. <laughs> and it'll go further. And you know, we know what happened here. No, this is I already talked about that. This is really the revolution in the revolution in tracking because this is also a sensor. This is a sensor because it knows location. It knows. This, you can use it as a, you know, left, right, compass, you can even wait, and this by itself is not just that employees checking off things, but that device by itself is doing the, a lot of tracking, you know, GPS tracking, and uh, among others. Blue Angle, the guy that's sponsoring the SEND, mm -hmm. said one little end of it. <coughs> Had 60,000 guys in an arena said, we now have the technology 
that we can go in and list every single person that's in that arena and their phone number, and that way we avoid going through Facebook or any other censoring agency, and we can now text directly onto their phone, and we can capture events that happened up to two years ago. We just dial Dallas, Texas, a certain stadium, it'll give me every single phone number that was in attendance in that stadium. Six cents a name. Exactly. And they're doing it. And, and imagine, uh, speaking of really sports, scary. you know, Jaguars have, uh, they just put the two sensors on each uh, of the players and measure every one-tenth of a second, every move during the practice and during the game. They started this less than a year ago. Speaking of interpreting this data, I am not, I can interpret soccer data, not the American football data. Somebody needs to know what to do with it. That's amazing what you can do with it. And that will trickle down to the uh, to the colleges because you know if, if University of Alabama pays 11 million bucks to a football coach, then it yeah. will trickle down. He will buy it with his own money probably. Yeah. And then it will trickle down to the high schools. It's just a matter of time. It's and valuable in negotiating contracts. Hmm? You negotiate contracts. Right, you don't right. move very much. Mm -hmm. You didn't move enough. Yeah. We're exactly. renegotiating yeah. contracts. Yeah, could be move fast enough. Could be fast enough. Could be enough. And but it also has on the injuries because it measures not only the game but also measures the injuries and, and, and measures tons of other things. You know, it's not just tracking the game; it's also tracking the practice. Also, you know, how fast they do they get to certain level. PGA here is unbelievably sophisticated. Nobody talks about it. They track every trajectory of every ball golf yeah. ball today. Yeah. It's amazing. Okay. And they sell this data to the golf manufacturers among others, and do the things that, okay, so the impact here is, we think, keep this in mind, more frequent, more detailed, more personal, more transparent tracking. So that means real-time analysis, real-time alerts, real-time communication, real-time transparency. One of my favorite things is that when we give our employees a task, they usually do that task very well. What, hap what doesn't happen is that they don't start that task on time, or they don't tell the next person that they did it, or the next person doesn't know that they did it because they never acknowledged or didn't know. So it's a, we are wasting enormous amount of time not on the actual work, but actual communication. You can automate communication because you will say, if I finish pouring the slab, then the framer can come in automatically. <laughs> Today they don't even know it. I'm, I'm saying I'm amazed. They, uh, I, I asked the, one of the superintendents, how do, how do you know that they lay they those slabs? Well, I just drive around, I know those workers. And, oh, that's a very effective way of doing it. You know Why? It's enough to have a crew that did that slab just push the button. I did it. And take a picture. They should and, start and all using done. it for road construction guys. Road construction guys. Mm -hmm. Oh, sure. sure. All six yeah. of them leaning on the shovel. Six yes. guys leaning on a shovel for the last half hour. It will be over. Well, that's the problem because they're waiting for something. Yeah, they're waiting. They're not yes. just not yes. working. They're this waiting for something. They can't do what they're supposed to do. And they don't know what they're waiting 